So this is part two of HACCP, uh, it can be of HACCP level two and level three. This is disadvantages of end product testing. Well, one of the disadvantages is control is reactive, action is taken after problems occurred, considerable expertise is needed to interpret results, testing may be slow, the cost of sampling and analysis may be high, Operation is controlled usually by scientists in a remote laboratory away from the main factory or food area. Only applied to a proportion of food, so there's limited samples. Uh, I feel like it's just a, a photograph of a particular part of the operation. It does not relate to all potential hazards and is a limited number of staff directly involved in food safety. So let's have a look at module two. We looked at the introduction to HACCP. So let's have a look at the hazards. And the aim of this unit is to introduce you to hazards. And the learning outcomes are by the end of this unit, you'll be able to describe biological, physical, and chemical hazards relevant to food safety. So what is a hazard? Very much like health and safety, the definition of a hazard is anything with the potential to cause harm. But with food safety, this could be microbiological, for example, food poisoning or foodborne disease. And the sources of microbiological contamination include, could be present in raw materials, cross-contamination during the process, multiplication and toxins, multiplication of bacteria as they grow, and toxins released from bacteria when they grow, and the survival of spores and toxins. Chemical, we look at the cause in things like food poisoning and chronic illnesses, where there's a buildup of chemicals in uh, the tissue, human tissue. Sources, again, include, could be present in raw materials, cleaning agents, pesticides, weed killers, allergens, excess additives, poisonous food. And the last one is physical contamination. Something you can actually see cuts to the mouth. It could cause choking, broken teeth, internal injury, and burning. Again, sources similar to the other two could be present in raw materials, or foreign bodies could be introduced during production and preparation. So failure to control food hazards. Let's have a look at what has happened in the past. In 1964, in Aberdeen, there were 400 plus cases of typhoid, a foodborne disease. 1984, in the Stanley Royd Hospital, there were 435 cases of salmonella food poisoning, 19 deaths. In 1989, in Birmingham, Clostridium botulinum, there were 27 cases and one death. In 1996, J. Barr, John Barr in Michelin, Scotland, in what was then the world's worst case of E. coli food poisoning, caused by E. coli 0157, there were 500 plus cases and 21 deaths. And in 2005 in South Wales, under the same strain of E. coli 0157, 156 cases and one death. Uh, the young lad uh, not living too far from me in the UK. The effects of food poisoning and food complaints on a food business are the resources involved in the investigation, brand damage, adverse publicity, loss of business, fines, closure, compensation, loss of public confidence. Microbiological hazards, let's just look at that. We've got bacteria, single-celled organisms, Viruses, a lot smaller than bacteria, they still can cause a lot of problems. Not classed by a lot of food safety experts and scientists as living molecules. Protoctists, molds, parasites, and algae. Now, the hazards themselves, you can get multiplication of the bacteria, toxin production from some bacteria, and survival of bacteria if there's not been any processing involved such as a lack of cooking to the correct temperature 
and spore germination of certain bacteria, uh, in particular Clostridium and Bacillus. Factors affecting multiplication of bacteria include temperature, time, pH, or the level of acidity, alkalinity, AW, which is the availability of water or moisture, oxygen, nutrients available, and preservatives. Thank you for watching our video. Please take a moment to visit our website by clicking on the link below. We'll see you there.